And I'm Dr. Adam Jirachi. And you are listening to Love's a Secret Weapon podcast. Hi, welcome back to our podcast and part four of chapter seven, Wishing and Hopin'. In this reading, Donna takes on a Johnny Kidd classic. And who wants to wish her a happy 18th birthday? I'll give you a clue. He got her all shook up. Plus, stick around for Donna's catch up with a shindy colleague, the legendary music video and concert director, David Mallett. You've seen his work in short and long form in the videos of Queen, David Bowie, The Rolling Stones, Tina Turner, Joan Jett, ACDC, and the list goes on and on. Go, Donna. It got a little touchy when those sexual feelings from Marvin Gaye's songs attracted a racially mixed crowd to want to get down with the music and forget about where they came from. There was a revolution in the air. More freedom rang in the air with lyrics from Bob Dylan's blown in the wind, sexual freedom, women burning their bras, racial freedom, R&B music from Detroit and Atlanta crossed over the color lines. From Barry Gordy to Jerry Wexler, Motown music was generating a harmony for whites and blacks to find more common ground. Shindig provided a venue that paralleled political issues of the day. I personally experienced some very intense racial issues that impacted my life. Before even the airing of the show, Jack Good had to deal with the political issue. The network came down on him for having a mixed-race program and insisted that he eliminate the Blossoms from the cast. He said he would, as long as the network would put it in writing. Jack told them that he would then send the letter to his friend, the Attorney General, Robert Kennedy. Jack Good knew that Robert Kennedy had made a commitment to his friend Martin Luther King, Jr., that originated in the early part of his brother's first year in office. There was an issue called the Freedom Riders, which gained nationwide attention and brought Martin Luther King Jr. to the forefront of the civil rights movement. They never sent a letter. (laughs) Therefore, the first show was scheduled to air with the Blossoms. It was devastating for me to learn that when Diana Ross and the Supremes were booked, They had to stand on pedestals to create a barrier between them and all the white dancers. The great Jackie Wilson was isolated in a spotlight away from the dancers that remained restricted on the risers. When I sang Shaken All Over, a song by Johnny Kidd and a hit by the Guess Who, I wore a black bodysuit and I, too, was put up on a riser, isolated from the dancers, not because I was white, but because of the sexuality of the song. Shakes in my thighs 
the network had a moral point of view that prevented our hit show from maintaining the standards that made it an overnight success with the American audience. The American television audience in the 50s up to 1960 watched Father Knows Best, a beloved primetime sitcom that would only allow the mother and father to have separate beds, and even then to be buttoned up with their bathrobe somewhere close so that they could get out of bed and cover up again. We were the microcosm reflecting the country's moral conflicts. Three days before my 18th birthday, I was on set when the assistant director, Lee, told me there was a phone call for me. I walked over to the darkly lit area where the phone was, perched high on a pedestal. Is this Donna? a male voice asked. Yes, I said. Elvis Presley has a limo outside waiting for you. He'll bring you up to his house. He wants to wish you a happy birthday. Elvis? I thought, oh my God, I love him and idolize him. I also tried out for one of his movies and got too busy with Dr. Pepper to do it. My loss. My mind was racing. Then I remembered a rumor that Elvis would invite someone of the female gender into his bedroom. I've got this guy on hold while I'm processing my thoughts. I'm probably the only virgin in Hollywood at my age. I couldn't lose my virginity to Elvis. I said, thanks, but I really can't go, and hung up. I was always closely chaperoned by my parents, and my values were to obey them. How could I sacrifice all I worked for in a blink? If Elvis wants to see me, it better make an offer that my parents would approve of. What a disappointment. Elvis is someone I never did meet. When he died, I prayed for him to send me one note, just one note of his beautiful voice. I ultimately sang on 26 shows for one and a half years. The highlight of my life was showing up at the set on Prospect and Talmadge. Shindig was a platform to make music and cultural history, and I love being part of that. David, may I introduce you to our podcast listeners? Um, Everyone, please welcome David Mallett. And David and I go back to when we were both teenagers in Hollywood. Um, we have a very mutual uh, kind of godfather in our life, Jack Good, the producer of Shindig. And um, I imagine you could tell us, uh, David, how Jack brought you into Shindig. Well, I was at school and I met Jack once um, uh, at... Uh, oddly enough, at a museum, um, my brother knew Jack Good vaguely because my brother was much older than me and had been to university with Jack. And he introduced me to Jack when I was about 14, 15. And um, immediately Jack and I got on because Jack found that I knew as much about rock and roll, I mean real rock and roll, as he did. <laughs> and I, I was kind of loving all the music that was actually too old for me. I was I was loving the music that was really well, Jerry and Elvin and everybody, and everybody were really big when I was like 12 or 10 even, 10. So uh, anyway, Jack discovered that I knew as much about rock and roll as he did. And then when I got to the end of my school days, which is 17, 18 years old, I wrote Jack a letter uh, mm. and said, if you're interested in having a dog's body <laughs> in, uh, in America uh, to, to work for you, I'm yours because I'm leaving school and I got no job. And the next minute, I get a cablegram, telegram, from Jack saying, "Come over in in January, and you've got the job." Oh, that is so serendipitous and um, total serendipity. And I started off as assistant to the producer, and about four weeks later, I was sort of half running bits for Jack, and I became associate producer, all due to Jack Good. So, uh, I'm, but you are the you are the, the capable one who who presented yourself, and you you know I love the idea. You know, my podcast is called "Love the Secret Weapon," David, and you know yourself when you love yourself, and you how how are you how how did you grow up? I mean, did you have um, well a, a wonderful childhood? Um, I had a kind of odd childhood because I had two brothers and a sister, all of whom were 20 years older than me. Oh so I had a kind of a lonely upbringing, but 
Uh, the, the moment I heard one record on a tiny little transistor radio, which I wasn't allowed to have, oh, no. and it was it was called Great Balls of Fire, and of my I was like ten years old maybe, and I just my jaw dropped, and from that moment I was like a rock and roll junkie, and right. oddly enough I still am a rock and roll junkie to this so day. You just came in fully equipped. Well, Jack, Jack had never met anybody that knew as much about rock and roll as he did. Uh, actually, I didn't know as much as him, but I knew enough. Of, I knew nearly as much as him. Um, and uh, oddly enough, the, both Jack and I really loved people that maybe a lot of other people didn't love that. Much, like Little Richard in England was not yes. as big as he was uh, anywhere else. I don't think. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then we had a star called Jet Harris in England, who was one of the shadows, who was never even a success. But Jack and I both thought that he was like the ultimate rocker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that gut feeling you have inside. Uh, I know I had a little transistor radio, too, that I would put under my pillow. When I was probably maybe a tiny bit older than you, maybe 11 or 12, and I would listen to it all night. <laughs> well, see, we had no radio stations in England. Mm -hmm. We had one illegal, well, semi-legal station called Radio Luxembourg, which only went on the air at 7 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. I think it ran 7 o'clock till midnight. And it was, it was broadcast from the state of Luxembourg. Oh, and it wow. had the, the biggest area you've ever seen. It was, I don't know how many thousand watts it was, but it reached literally to the Arctic Circle. Oh, uh, but but, and here's the big but, it used to fade every 20 seconds. It would fade for a few seconds oh, no. and <laughs> dissolve into mush. So there was, there was kids all over Europe, literally all over Europe and Russia, everywhere, listening, glued to this thing, and then it would fade. And you could hear a collective sigh running <laughs> over Europe. Everybody <laughs> saying, oh, shit, I can't hear it. <laughs> I was yes, yes, yes. I mean, I've been I've been watching so many shindig outtakes and you know on YouTube and the memories bring back that 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 glorious feeling that you know that you're describing. It's like the culture the culture that we lived with was it it was the the music was kind of the root of it. And then, you know, everything else were, were the tributaries, the, the, the clothing, the cars, you know, just the, 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 way we, the way we were thinking was very revolutionary. Well, it, it was like the world changed into color one day in 1954. The world that's had right. been black and white up till then, and suddenly it was in color. Yes, that's a perfect way of describing it. Oh, my gosh. Well, I have to officially thank you for uh, suggesting to Jack that I sing Shaken All Over. Yeah. Well, I, I was doing all those old rock and roll things with a lot of, a lot of our artists, and uh, they, things that they, like you, would never have done Shaking All Over had somebody not been mad enough to uh, ask you to do it, <laughs> and had you not been mad enough to try it. I and love a, it. as I remember it, you made a bloody good job of it. I really did, and it brought out something in me that, you know, I was forbidden to express. So <laughs> I guess that's why they put me high up on a pedestal, you know, uh, to, to make me separate from, from the dancers. You know, there was too much sensuality coming out, I think. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were kind of, um, yeah, that's right. You, you, you pervade that image, and I thought um, <laughs> we're going to give us some good old dirty rock and roll. Thank you, thank you. Well, I loved it. I still love it. May I tell you that when I um, when I published my my book Top Sixties a few years ago, I did a a book uh, kind of opening, and um, and I, I sang in front of an audience. David, I, I think I may have told you I hadn't performed for fifty years an entire concert. And I when I started singing, well, actually when the guitar started playing the the riff for Shaken All Over. The audience staying with me the whole time. Well, there you are, you see. It's legend. All that stuff is legend. And people don't realize that the kids, even today, they know every word and every note of all those old classic records. And they don't know bugger all about some modern thing that was number one last week. Yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that proves that, you know, the music that came from our era, you know, is, 
it's legendary and it's timeless, you know. It's completely and, timeless and it will never die. There's an expression in England, rock and roll will never die. Thank God. Thank God. God praise God praise the rock and roll. I know it's it's in my soul and I know it's in your soul. And you went on to you know, beyond Shindig, then you went on to you know, that was kind of your foundation, but my God, what you expanded into in the seventies and eighties and nineties was just amazing. Listen, I'm still I'm still just about doing it. I did A C D C this year, earlier on this year. Oh, so, fantastic. So, best band in the world now. As good as the Pirates, who did Shaking All Over. <laughs> oh, David. David, it's so good to talk with you. And um, what are your favorite memories of Shindig? I think when we weren't allowed too many black people on, and there was all this nonsense about, you know, you, you weren't allowed more than, you. if you had the blossoms, you wouldn't have somebody else, and all that nonsense. Terrible, 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 horrible stuff, which in England we didn't understand. And I think the time we put the Rolling Stones with John Lee Hooker and a load of other old blues guys, I think that was probably the moment when you thought, yes, at least we've achieved something here. Yeah, yeah, I felt it all along. Um, you know, I never understood it because, you know, in my heart, we are all one. But it never occurred to me because in England, we didn't have such a thing. We didn't have, we'd never had the requirement for a Martin Luther King. We didn't need someone like that because we never had the problem in the first place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the time, at the time. Mm -hmm. I know, we're we're like, um, United States has been kind of a, a big uh, kettle. You know, uh, brewing, uh, for, for hopefully the awareness that this young generation, um, you know, will absolutely unify and, um, and realize that, you know, we are all one and come together finally at last after Oh, every every wouldn't it be okay. nice wouldn't it be nice please darling you know i i hope to i hope to see you one day i still hope to see you one day that um, would be a major laugh now we're all bloody old that would be incredible well, of course oh. you're not bloody old you're not bloody old <laughs> we're we're both ageless who's counting <laughs> i think so but my god that was a few years ago now Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's it's still alive, as you as you were saying. And may I ask you the love the secret weapon question? What is your secret weapon? Rock and roll. David Mallet, you are precious. You are a gem. I'm so happy you're in my life, and I hope that the world shines bright. And you enjoy your life, and I enjoy mine, and we come together one day soon. I thank you very much. I think that's dead right. I, uh, yeah, I think uh, the sun should shine on all of us. Yes, sir.